Hello. In this video, I'd like to show you a little how the Robot Basic Simulator can help you develop very complex algorithms for movement of a mobile robot. If you look at some of our other videos, you'll notice that we showed you how to create some simple behaviors. For example, we showed you how to make the robot face a beacon, how it can move around an object hugging a wall as it goes, how it can follow a line. Well, these simple behaviors can be moved, can be mixed together to form a complex behavior. For example, the robot here is facing, currently facing this beacon over here on the right side. If we want the robot to find that beacon, we can have it move forward, face first, turn and face the beacon, and then move forward until it's blocked by an object. Then it could go around it. Maybe it will go left, maybe it will go right, depending on how we've set it up. But let's suppose it goes this direction goes around the object and maybe stops over here, having it go for some random amount of time. When it gets to here, it turns and faces the beacon again. And when it sees the beacon, it will try to move forward, again be blocked, and then start following the object again, following around until it finally reaches this area. Let's look at how simple this kind of algorithm could be coded. Look how simple it is to create this algorithm. We create a fine beacon subroutine. This subroutine has in it a repeat until loop that continues until it's found the beacon. The first thing that happens in the loop is we face the beacon. Then we move forward until we're blocked. Then we go around the object. Of course, we're going to go around a random distance because we have no idea how big the object is. But we go around the little ways and then we, if the beacon's not yet found, we go back up and start the loop again. We face the beacon again, go forward until we're blocked, and go around it again. We continue to do this until we finally get it. Now, the algorithm I'm going to show you is a little bit more complex than this, and it's explained in detail in Chapter 12 of our Bonanza book. But basically, this is the algorithm, except we have a little more complexities in how we can get unstuck in certain difficult situations. Okay, now let's look at that program in action. The robot moves toward the object, goes around an object, periodically stops and looks to see if it can get through, and eventually gets to the beacon. Again, it goes around this object. Sometimes it goes too far, but when it looks back at the object, it goes again. Very complex algorithms can be built using a series of simple behaviors. Again, this, op this particular algorithm is a little more complex because if the, in this particular case, we're having the program when it gets stuck and cannot find the object within a certain amount of time, it goes through a bunch of random behaviors in order to find its way out of a tight squeeze. Let's look at how we can do something even more complex now after this one finds the beacon. On this screen, we're showing how to take that complex algorithm that we just developed from simple behaviors and put it into a useful activity. In this case, we've got a battery charger shown in the upper left hand corner. This indicates the level of our battery and we've put a level here, a line showing that when it, the battery gets below that level of charge, normally that line would be near the bottom, of course, but we don't want to wait that long. When it gets to that level of charge, the robot needs to recharge itself. The charger, of course, is over here on the right-hand side. Now, we're going to use the algorithm we developed earlier, an algorithm that allows it to the robot to face the beacon, which is shown here in front of the charger, the red ball, face the beacon and try to move towards it. It'll have to go around objects in its path, of course, but when it finally gets here, it will run into the line. We've already talked in another video about how to detect a line and follow a line. When it hits this line, it will then follow it, and no matter which direction it follows it, it will end up coming into the charger. Once it bumps the charger, it's going to turn itself around and back itself into the charger. Notice this is all very easy to do because we already have a subroutine that can follow lines, a subroutine that can move around walls, a subroutine that can find beacons. All those things make it very easy. 
Let's see the program and see it run. This is the program to control the environment we just saw. The main program here sets up the environment and then while true, this is an endless loop, it roams around, then it goes and finds the beacon, follows the line, charges the battery, and continues to do that over and over. Let's run the program. Notice the battery is charging in the upper left hand corner. The robot over here in the lower right hand corner will leave the charger once it knows that the battery has charged. It will come out and just randomly move around. Very simple behavior. Notice as it's moving, the battery level is going down in the upper left hand corner. The battery is just another item that's simulated in the Robot Basic Simulator. Hopefully the robot will stay over here a little while when it goes down so that it'll make it a little more difficult to find the charger. Looks like it's going to be pretty close when it runs out of battery. Finds the line, follows the line, turns around, backs itself in. Notice his battery's charging again, and then it goes out again. The important thing is here that the Robot Basic Simulator allows you to deal with very simple algorithms, very simple behaviors, and then in the Robot Programmer's Bonanza, it shows you how to take those simple behaviors and start moving them together to create complex behaviors or complex systems like we see here. Getting close to the battery charge, so we'll have to find it again shortly. Imagine how difficult it would be to develop these behaviors if you had to build everything from scratch. It doesn't mean you won't build something eventually, but it sure makes it easier to have to have something like this to develop everything you need before you start building. If you like programming robots, I hope you'll check out our book, Robot Programmer's Bonanza. You can find it on our webpage at robotbasic.com. The important thing that we try to stress in the book is that programming robots is really what it's all about. Sure, it's fun to build things, but they're just toys if you don't learn how to make them do things interesting. And that's what Robot, Robot Programmer's Bonanza is about, developing algorithms. If you're totally new to programming, you might check out our beginner's book. It's also available at robotbasic.com. The important thing here is even if you can't afford one of our books, look at Robot Basic. It's a totally free language for schools, for individuals, for everyone. I think you'll enjoy it. Check it out.